Hello everybody, my name is Sam, this is Rust Fast Track. I'm going to get you programming in Rust as quickly as possible. This series assumes prior programming knowledge and I'm just going to run over concepts, how to use the documentation, how to find your way around, all the basics that you actually need to know to start programming and I'm trying to get you there as fast as possible. So, first of all, Rust is Package Manager is a program called Cargo. You should be able to query your cargo version by doing cargo double dash version. I am running cargo 0.2.0 nightly, that is... You, I'm expecting you to figure out how to install Rust, install GCC, hook them up so that everything compiles properly when you try and compile time or it will fail. Time is a package. We'll get onto that later. Coming, Rust should come with Cargo. You should be able to run Rust C, Rust compiler, version, and Cargo version. They should give you useful information. This is done on Rust 1.1.0. If you are not using Rust 1.1.0, things may function differently, but they probably shouldn't. At least the fundamentals. Right. Let's get right into this. How do you make a new program? Cargo, new, bin for binary, because we're not making a library. If you exclude that, it assumes you're making a library. We're not, we're making programs that run and do things. Right, you need to call it. We're gonna call this, uh, what should we start with? We'll call this output. Bam, output. Right, over to my editor. CD, D, come, the documents, Rust, uh, Rust, Fast track. Uh, of course, that was never going to work. How do you even do this in then? Rust fast track. There we go. CD output because that's the one we made. Right. Uh, Forget what editor I'm using, it's irrelevant. Right, here we go, these are the files you get. You get a .git file, because Cargo internally handles stuff with git. This is useful, it means you automatically have version control. A source file, we'll get onto that later. It gets ignored, again, because you're using git. And then cargo.toml, this is the package file. This outlays your package here. You can see this is me, this is my username and email address. This is the version number of the program. This is what the program is called. Right, onward. In the source directory, it has automatically generated a main.rs, and in here we have got a program. The program has a main function. You will be used to this from languages like C or any low-level language. The main function is where your program does run. You will notice that functions are created with the syntax fn. This is the abbreviation for function. You will notice we have curly brackets as control C to control the uh, layout of the code. This is not unique in any way. Unless you're a Python, if you're a Python developer, this should may be unfamiliar. But for pretty much everyone else on the planet, this will be familiar. What won't be familiar is this exclamation mark. Rust has two types of functions that you'll probably end up calling. One, functions. Two, macros. Functions are code that is compiled and run at runtime. They are that you call out to them. They get their own frame on the stack. That's all low-level bollocks. I'll get into at a later date when we look at the stack versus the heap, as that's a very core concept to how Rust works. Macros are what you see here. Macros expand. They expand at compile time into more code. They are a way of generating code that is uh, that can be system dependent. You can have a macro that sits outside the scope of main. All macros do is expand from one bit of code into another. You define them with the thing called macro rules. We will not focus on how that works until a future video. All you need to know is printing lines is very complicated because this actually handles formatting. At the moment it says hello world and if I go to my program here and I go to the thing and we say cargo build to compile it. As, uh, oh, we actually have to change into the output or into the directory. Right, cargo build and compiling and compiling and compiled. Cargo, run. Hello world. It did exactly what you should expect. Okay. So, quick things. Print line does what you expect. Print does what you expect. It prints, but it doesn't automatically add a backslash n at the end. Doing this is the exact same as saying print line essentially. When you call print line, it calls off to another macro called, well, it, it generates, it expands. You don't call out to a macro, you expand a macro. It, exp it expands another macro called format. Format takes a set of arguments that takes a format string like this. And some opera and some, some, some values to go into them. We'll go seven and we will go hello. 
So this would return seven and hello. I'm not going to teach you variables in this, which means I can't actually show you that happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that and then we're going to stick it in there. Uh, all right, and let's grab our seven and our hello. And you will see because this expands adds loads of code and then expands again, adding the format code, this will work. This is very nice print semantics, especially for a low-level programming language. Let's see it working. If you type cargo run without building and you've made changes to your code, it will figure it out and build it for you. You will see we have output seven and hello. That is because those macros expanded into each other. So print line expands into print with a backslash and at the end of it, expands into a format command that formats things that's why it's a macro it generates lots of code i don't know if there's a way to show you all the code this generates without loading the docs let's load the docs and show you because i'm interested in showing you how the docs work right first of all let's make this window a size that we can use for recording so are you not going to resize nicely oh you are okay good right let's quickly grab you okay there we go let me just make it actually fit to the screen. Okay, let's go to uh, doc, the documentation, .rustlang.org slash std for the standard library documentation. std, the Rust standard library, provides an essential blah, 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 blah. These are the docs. We are interested in the print line macro. We can go here and you will see print line takes either an expression and it will then print it and concatenate onto the end backslash n, or it will take an expression and then a bunch of arguments and it will print the concatenated formatted vo formatted form, it will print a concatenation of the formatted expression and that. Concat, now, now you see both of these call out to both concat and print, let's look at concat first. Concat uh, is going to expand in any given expression to some built-in bollocks. What it does is it grabs a ton of variables of different types goes into their, uh, what, are, what are called their string form expression, their two string thing, which is implemented by the display trait. We will get onto that at a later date. And it sticks them all together. You now understand what concat does. The other thing it does is cause to print with using concat to add the new lines at the end of it. Print calls to the input and output, calls to the input and output crate. This is a call, you'll notice, not a uh, a macro, there's no exclamation mark at the end, so it's going to actually call to the input and output print command, and it's going to format args this, where the args are everything we give to it. Now, those format format args expands to... Da -da -da. It is a compiler built-in source. It just tells you it's a compiler built-in. Wonderful. What it does is exactly what you saw it did. It takes, as you can see here, hello and then that and spits out well there are an absolute crap ton of format things if we go to the formatting library that is std format it will document these are some not all some of the types of ways you can use it these here you can see it's got a debug there's also a pretty debug which is good for huge things this is just giving up a value where you use a key value pair it does lots of things. These are all the argument types you can pass to it. It doesn't tell you that debug also has a pretty form. I don't know how pretty forms work. There's loads, all kinds of magic. All you need to do is go to doctorrustlang.org slash std slash fmt slash index.html and you can read all the docs for how formatting works. This is, I've shown you how to output crap onto the screen, how to use the docs, and hopefully you'll have figured out how to create and run a new Rust program and hopefully you figured out on your own how to get Rust actually working. For the people who didn't manage to do that and started watching anyway, rustlang.org. Install, install it. If you ever try and compile a pack, uh, something that requires this package, um, no, I used the wrong syntax, da da da. Da, da, da. If you ever try and end up having to compile this package here, time, we'll get into what cargo is and crates later, but if you ever have to compile this, you're going to need GCC linked. All you need to do is Google something along the lines of time won't compile Rust GCC. And there will have been people with your issue. We'll get on to that at a later date when we look into packages and we look into all kinds of bollocks that goes on in Rust. This has been episode one of Rust Fast Track. You now know how to do output.